Immerse yourself in the profound insights offered by Father Chuck Belmonte as he delves into daily reflections on various gospel passages from the Bible. March 11, Monday. What will the final judgment be like? We recite in the Creed. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. The judge will be Christ himself, who will appear visible in his human condition so that he can be seen by all. All human beings without exception will be judged for all our works, good and bad, and also for our thoughts and words. The final judgment will reveal the last consequences of our actions and omissions. The truth of the relations of each person with God will be shown when we appear before Christ, who is the truth. In sacred scripture, the last judgment is seen against the backdrop of the love of God inviting us to penance. It reveals that Christ will come in all glory surrounded by angels. He will summon all peoples and all men. He will reward each one for his deeds according to the measure of one's love. He will establish his definitive kingdom and hand it over to the Father. And he will be assisted by the apostles in this judgment. See if I'll Matthew 25, 35, 46, 1 Corinthians 15, 23, 28, Luke 22, 30. But why are there two judgments? If every man undergoes a particular judgment, it seems that there is no need for a universal judgment. St. Thomas answers, why a universal judgment? Are not all men rewarded right after death? The reward granted to men in the judgment of God is twofold. In the first place, the reward of the soul, later the reward of the body. The reward of the soul is given out right after death, but in the final judgment they will also receive the glory of the body. St. Thomas implies that there will be four categories of defendants. One, a part of the wicked will receive condemnation without trial. These are the unbelievers because he who does not believe is already judged. John 3.18 2. Another group of the wicked will undergo judgment before their condemnation. Those who were believers and they had faith while alive but died in mortal sin. 3. The judgment of the good is also divided in two. One part of the good ones who will be saved, but will still go through the judgment. Although they died in grace, they failed in the handling of temporal things in some point. For this, they will be judged, but they will be saved. Four, some will be saved without passing through the judgment because they were poor in spirit for love of God. Moreover, they will judge others, St. Thomas emphasizes. He also indicates that it will be a fearful judgment because the judge, all-knowing, all-powerful and inflexible, will appear to the just with a sweet and pleasant countenance, but to the wicked, he will present himself with a angry and harsh face. I would be delighted to extend an invitation to you once again tomorrow for another insightful reflection on the gospel by Father Belmonte.